So I'm gonna, I, I wanna dig in a little bit deeper with, with the, a, a question around the, the value proposition for the Community Foundation. I mean, you, you have so much um, need in your community, um, you know, whether it's housing, um, uh, homelessness, um, you know, adult literacy, um, whatever it is, and um, and and there's there's a real importance to to be able to focus and um, your, your work, um, and and then also there's just that you need to make the case for your board or your CEO um, about this work. So mm -hmm. so I'd just like to tease out a little bit um, how how you went about um, making the case for this type of work um, you know that that fits into strategic work at, at your foundation so I'm looking at you Chris so I want to start with you because you're 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 thinking this through I literally just went through you know all the paperwork that, that you're you're thinking this through around the equity piece right. and and so your your foundation is committed to equity mm -hmm. um, in Boulder County but why why does journalism matter? Why does ethnic media matter for, for this issue? I mean, there's so much that could be funded. Like, tell me a little bit more about your thinking for that and the case that was made. I don't think it could have been possible two years ago. Yeah. Um, but over the last two years, board level and staff level work and the leadership of our CEO right here, Jeff Hirota, um, he came in two years ago and he said, wow, we are an incredibly active community foundation for our size. Um, you know, and, and full credit for everything that we're doing. Um, but can we step back a minute and, and pause and, and, and say, is there a theory of change? Is there a vision that this all rolls up to other than improving the quality of life in our community? Um, so we went through some deep work. We did a strategic plan and really for the first time, I think, came to a comprehensive 360 degree approach to our community. In the past, you know, one of the first times that uh, we collaborated with the Knight Foundation was uh, because we were concerned on an issue-specific area mm -hmm. of education equity and school readiness. And so, uh, you know, w one of the um, 10 years ago, you know, grants from the Community Information Challenge was to fund a campaign, uh, an awareness campaign on the importance of early childhood. And, and we're proud of what that did. I mean, it, it, it helped pass a mill levy and, you know, doubled preschool and kindergarten in our community. And, and that's incredibly important. Um, but until we did that deeper strategic vision work on um, really what everything rolls up to is a vision of an equitable community in a place where equity is far from being achieved. Uh, as you know, and, and people define it all different ways, what we've latched onto recently is creating systems where all can thrive. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have that, then you have a very similar perspective of a robust enterprising news operation mm -hmm. uh, who cares about every kind of topic from transportation to education and, and regional things, everything under the sun. Um, but l let's face it, you know, the, the reason that they exist and that they're called the fourth estate and that they're protected by the First Amendment is because, uh, as you know, our recently deceased uh, editor, you know, used to just defend, defend, defend the people's right to know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, th that, I think, was important, shifting from uh, issue specific, how might we move the needle, to a generally, what, what, is, what does our community feel like when we mm -hmm. pursue our vision? Mm -hmm. And then we became um, uh, interested in the whole communities experience but with a point of view that, that tracks pretty similar to an investigative reporter's point of view. You know, let's, let's find the information that's being hidden from our community and that is holding us back. It, there's, there's a pretty strong overlap there as far as goals. Which you see as critical. You know, you yeah. see that journalism piece as critical to to this equity within the Boulder County. Yeah, as our former president, uh, Josie, if you're watching from Boulder, mm -hmm. hi Josie. She used to say, you know, you you can't you can't uh, you can't call the community to action until yeah. they are all educated on what they're trying to act on. Yeah. yeah. And and so with this, if if all you're doing is following the police scanner and the agenda set by City Hall. And that's what you see in the pages of your newspaper. Yeah. Then a, your paper is getting ignored, you know, because it's not relevant to what yeah. the people are saying is relevant. Uh, and b, nobody feels moved when you say, "Come on, guys, yeah. we got to do something," because they're like, "Well, 
it looks like you've been talking about something that we haven't and been I think, part of. I think another um, important piece, Chris, and, and Michael, you touched upon this too um, with the research, is, is that having the journalists look like the community, mm -hmm. um, actually, you know, be representative of the community. And that's, that's a major, major issue mm -hmm. in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that as you're thinking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and, and, and journalism, that is something that, that you guys might be, might be uh, funding and the ethnic media piece. Mauricio, I want to pass this to you, though. Um, because you, um, what's really interesting about, about the Community Foundation is, is that um, you guys have matrixed um, you know, journalism um, throughout the organization. That this is, you know, uh, local news and information falls within, you know, like you said, the the corporate responsibility, the different programs. I mean, tell, I want to tease that. What does that mean? Yeah. So it starts with um, making um, the the case for uh, journalists as partners. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that we will not uh, stop the. Um, the collaboration where journalists are hired to mm -hmm. help us develop a report, that will continue. Mm -hmm. I think that the marketing and communications relationship with journalists will also continue. Let's just what, <laughs> just like everyone knows, you know, if, if you run a nonprofit organization, uh, you, you, you build relationships to get your story out and uh, to be in, uh, you know, in, in center stage on issues that mm -hmm. are of interest to some journalists. But with regards to uh, the, the, the work that we're describing here, mm -hmm. um, I would say that we happen to have a, a, um, a cluster of program officers that understand the importance and the significance of not only uh, providing support uh, to organizations that are addressing the challenges in the community, that are providing services to members of the community, but that those organizations can be experts that can uh, be useful to journalists that are interested in uh, telling critical stories, that are interested in identifying ways in which uh, the challenges are being solved. Um, the other part has been the ongoing back and forth learning process with John. Um, I believe he's uh, like a sensei, uh, <laughs> and, and I believe that the work that we've been doing has been like that of a dojo, where we're continuously practicing different katas, different ways of getting this work done, and we haven't figured it out completely. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the back and forth that we have had um, is, um, do, do we call journalists in the meeting um, to tell them about our strategic plan where they desire to um, inspire them to write stories about the strategic plan? Or do we invite journalists to a meeting to have conversations about how uh, they can um, advance some of the uh, solutions that mm -hmm. members of our network are, are generating? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, and, and another example is, uh, can we partner with journalists to elevate maybe issues that the Community Foundation identifies to be critical, not only to the institution, but like to the community at large? And um, we have a, 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 a space called the Center for Early Learning, uh, was responsible for uh, bringing um, uh, the, all the candidates for the gubernatorial race in California last year. And uh, the way that we saw uh, um, an opportunity here was to co-sponsor with um, uh, journalistic institutions uh, a televised and well-documented uh, gubernatorial debate, sponsored by the Community Foundation in collaboration uh, with uh, some major media uh, networks, was a, a shift that we had not experienced before and again it allow us to um, play uh, the role of bringing people together to figure out ways of utilizing their uh, tools uh, mm -hmm. to advance mm -hmm. uh, solutions. In this particular case what we were interested in was to make sure that um, the candidates would elevate the significance of early learning throughout the state um, by becoming committed to 
uh, advancing uh, solutions in uh, the early learning space without necessarily having the community foundation um, being the one that's pushing this mm -hmm. continuously, but building a partnership three ways with the candidates, with journalists, and with uh, nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. in our community, we were successful in not only organizing the debate, but in continuing the process, this partnership with um, the players mm -hmm. that were critical in this uh, debate beyond uh, the, the uh, elections. So uh, right now, uh, there are folks that are coming together. The governor is looking at the possibility of uh, collaborating with philanthropy around this space. Oh, wow. And uh, you know, all of that comes from just kind of reimagining. You have all the players already uh, together, but how do we go about doing our work? Um, it's, it's part of, of what we are exploring yeah. To, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, what, I keep, what, I'm he what I keep on hearing um, at this conference and, and, and from, from actually the, the three of you is, is, is this idea around engagement journalism. I mean, it's really, it's, it's journalism um, and, and that community is at the core of it. Um, and, and that's a really critical piece. I have a question for you, Michael. Um, so so let's, let's talk about how um, you um, and your team um, made the case for, for doing research. Um, at your at your foundation, like wh why right. why was that in, important to start there? Yeah, I think it came at a really fortunate time for us because we had just begun our strategic planning process mm -hmm. as an organization, and so part of that work was doing a perception study with Gallup mm -hmm. about how people view the community foundation, mm -hmm. and um, so that was information need at its core. Mm. But I think as community foundations, we often rely on our nonprofit partners to tell us what the community needs versus removing that layer and going out to the community directly and asking them what they need, or we have the, as community foundations, we often say these are the priorities of the community. Here we want everybody to focus on these areas. Well, what if we could remove that layer and actually ask the community what information needs, what are the issues that are most critical? So to frame this research as an opportunity to enhance our overall vision for the enterprise by saying at, at the core, we started this movement 105 years ago to enhance the lives of greater Clevelanders. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that idea of what are the needs for the people who live in our community and put information needs. For us, local journalism is part of the solution of addressing information needs. It's pitching it to our board as lifting up newsrooms is not gonna cut it. Pitching it to our board as addressing core information needs of our residents, that's gonna go so much farther in the yeah. conversation. So it was reframing in our mind, thanks to all the inspiration for these two and people I met at this conference, just to think of it differently. Yeah. Yep, I think yeah. that's that's really really smart.